know the uh, the two cranes here? You can kind of go really low there because they always end up colliding into each other and coming up like a coconut. I, actually, I loved and loathed having my hair cut as a kid all at the same time. I loved it because it was a, the only chance I had to see dirty magazines. Got all my sex education around the barbers. And Colin, what about your hair cutting memories? Uh, I don't have any, actually. <laughs> he never got his hair cut. He was expelled from school for having hair down past his meridian. <laughs> Apple Venus is a new disc. It's round, it's shiny, and it's full of music. There you go. So, And if you don't like it, well, hell, you can frisbee it and your dog can catch it. Yeah, we, uh, we, we wrote a hell of a lot of material while we were in the fridge. So uh, I had a real Jones. That's another word I've learned recently, a Jones, to, do, uh, to work with orchestral sounds, which I think come from more from like musicals and show songs rather than the classics, because the classics don't mean much to me, you know. I was, as a kid, I'd sit there, and English radio would be playing, and there was no such thing as pop or rock radio. All they played was selections from My Fair Lady and West Side Story and Oklahoma and stuff like that. So that's all you got to hear. So I guess that's why I wanted to work with an orchestra. <laughs> They have a, an acoustic spine, and the orchestral textures are like the heart and lungs, liver and lights that you hang on them. Uh, but they all seem to have this acoustic spine to them. So really, that was the the colour of the album, if you know what I mean. The album was recorded across a year, but we did most of the recording of most of the music in one day. So it was a really bizarre kind of shape to the recording. And then we finished off the singing and stuff in Colin's front room. So. From Abbey Road to Colin's front room, it's a similar sort of sensation, you know, <laughs> similar decor. Uh, I sat down with my keyboard technique, which is that. Let's see that. That's good keyboard. So that's my only keyboard technique. And uh, I sat down with a little keyboard and some orchestral samples, and I was noodling basically, like you you doodle by a phone pad or something like that. I was started out just with a little thing that went dun 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 dun. And I put a bass in, which a plucked bass, which is none of that is on the beat. It's all pushed. So you have the rhythm going. I wonder if I can do this. So you have the, well, and a haircut at the same time. So you have the tempo going like this, and you have the bass going boom, 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 boom. You know, the bass is all pushed. And then I'd put some muted trumpets in all on, on the offbeat and bap, 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 bap. And I can't sing all the parts together here. And I took my shirt and shoes and socks off and was dancing around into my little home studio for hours on end, thinking, God, this is great, what have I discovered? And uh, before you know it, we, uh, we had River of Orchids there. <laughs> I did some bass sessions and stuff. I mean, it was a pretty lean period, I have to say. I did some bass sessions and um, uh, basically tried to handle a lot of the legal stuff as well because obviously um, when we decided that we were going to get out of our contract, uh, lawyers wanted contacting and you, ha you had to uh, bring up these guys and keep pestering them to get on the case, you know. We license ourselves around the world, basically. We, we are the record company which uh, involves a lot more of the business side of it, which we detest, but uh, it, it's got to be done if we're, if we're ever going to make any money in this game, you know. 
Colin and I were on a journey recently, and, and Colin turned to me and said, do you think we write outdoor songs or indoor songs? And we talked about this for a while, and we came to the conclusion that me being a complete indoor bookworm swat, I write outdoor songs. All my songs seem to take place in fields and on the hills and at sea and in the forest and all that kind of thing. And Colin is more of an outdoor sort of person. He was a, a, a groundsman and, you know, he lives right out in the country there. All his songs seem to take place in the kitchen, the parlor, the front room, the shed. So he writes the indoor songs and I write the outdoor songs. So I guess we're hankering after that missing part of our personalities or whatever. I like a lot of those kind of songs that, that don't deal in, in rock and roll sounds and textures. And I think that's sometimes much more effective for getting the message over. And, uh, you know, rather than guitars, to me, pagan, pagan earth and, and growth and stuff sounds great coming out on woodwinds. So, hey, woodwinds, we'll put it in there, you know. It's any instrument that, that is the right color, we'll use it. Tend my fruit, tend my fruit, ah, you've got to have a hobby. A man must have a shed to keep him sane. Can I have a quick peek? How are we doing? We did the orchestral record, really, or the acoustical orchestral record, because we didn't want to make a record that everybody would say, "Wow, this is this is pretty much like the old XDC." You know, that would be our worst nightmare. I think you have to keep changing, keep it uh, fresh for yourself. You know, and uh, that's what we've tried to do throughout our career. And after seven years, we just wanted to come back with a record that people would be surprised with. You know. This is the first time I've ever had a shoe shine and sat with a guitar on my lap. I'm having a bluesy shoe shine. Aha, yeah. I woke up this morning and had them shoe shine blues. These are, they, be careful with these. They're antiques now. They're, they're falling to pieces. A shine might mess them up. Yeah, well, they're held together with shine. No, I'll put it, I'll put it nice. I'll put it nice and neat. Yeah, well. The green man is the male part of life. He was worshipped in pagan times in England. And I think the English are still pagans at heart. But he was worshipped in pagan times. He is the trees. He is the man in the trees. Uh, he was sanitized later as Robin Hood. He's the, the eternal father, the eternal lover, the eternal male. And I thought it was good to reinstate him. Transistor Blast is just a bunch of, it's, it's, it's a historical, it's a hysterical document. It's uh, a lot of stuff that the BBC recorded uh, from any time from 77, before we had a record deal, uh, up to around about 89, I think was the last session that we did for them. Some of it I, I hadn't heard in 20 years, you know, the early live stuff especially. And in trepidation, I, I got a tape player in the kitchen and put this stuff on and I thought, oh, I'm going to be really embarrassed by this. Because, you know, 20 years ago, if you saw if you saw you or heard you 20 years ago, you, I'm sure you'd think, oh, God, what a stupid kid I was, you know. 20 minutes ago. 20 minutes ago. That's, 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 well, things happen quicker here in L.A., you know. But uh, I put this stuff on and I laugh my socks off. I was here, socks were over there, you know. I really, really just guffawed myself into a coma. Uh, because I forgave this, this skinny kid, you know. I wasn't embarrassed anymore by the, uh, the stupid sounds that we were making. We were just four skinny kids making a horrible noise, you know. But it was great fun at the time. Well. Are 
audience is uh, the average person who likes XTC is 20 going on 55. She's a female tattooist who works part-time as a male weightlifter. They live in Japan with a house in America. They're yellow, brown, black, white, a few green ones, I think. I'll tell you, when we do these in-store things and people come along and want stuff signed, you know, you get everybody. I'm shocked. You know, is every... It's like a foyer meeting in the United Nations, and they're all ages. They're everything from little kids, serious, you know, youngsters, like 16, right up to white-haired old grannies with, with stuff. They have stuff I don't have. It's just, you know, discs that have come out in obscure territories of, of things, and you say, whoa, where did they get that, you know? I got a love letter the other night. Someone, someone gave me a love letter in the store. It's this beautiful black girl in New York gave me this, 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 sent me, gave me this letter and it was drenched in perfume and I read it back in the hotel and I was so flattered. I mean, I haven't had a love letter in a long time, but this was, ooh, you know. And that was it. I'll be your Clinton and you'll be my Lewinsky, oh gee, we'd smoke that old cigar we had and... Get off that one immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Them old impeachment blues. Never have regrets. Pointless. You know, why waste brain cells on regrets? Uh, for all the all the stupid things we may have done, all the bad things that may have done or were done to us or whatever. Pointless. Regrets. Forget it. I own this river. I own this town. All of its climate and its water.